friends, Ashley from Ashley Young Music Studio here, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to keep a steady pulse. And when we talk about how to keep a steady pulse in music, what we're talking about is how to maintain a steady beat. The words pulse and beat are kind of used interchangeably, and so when talking about a pulse or a beat, I like to kind of clarify some of the terminology. So a steady pulse is the same thing as a steady beat. It's similar to our heartbeat. We all have a heartbeat and our heart beats nice and steady. If we're resting, our heartbeat is nice and slow. If we're exercising, our heartbeat is faster. And our heartbeat has some flexibility in that we can gradually make it go faster and gradually slow it down. But ideally, our heartbeat is not jumping around, it's not skipping beats, it's not suddenly going faster, suddenly going slower. It's nice and steady. And the same is true of a beat or a pulse in music. Especially in music of the Western classical genre, we want to keep a steady pulse or a steady beat. And it's really important to know how to do that because rhythm is the structure of our piece. It's the skeleton, actually. And rhythm is inherent to the world that we live in. If you sit at the beach, you can hear ocean waves crashing in a specific rhythm. Our breath moves usually in a certain rhythm and again like our heartbeat it can be fast or it can be slow but it's usually pretty steady and we don't even often notice that it's happening but that's a good example of rhythm so rhythm is all around us and steady rhythms are very calming to us as humans it's actually a really great way to soothe babies and toddlers is to kind of clap gently or speak in a rhythm. And that's because when we hear steady rhythms, we are at peace. We feel that everything is right in the world. So when you are playing music or when you're listening to music and we feel someone struggling with rhythm or we're really struggling with rhythm in ourselves, it actually causes a lot of stress and anxiety to happen. And obviously that stress and anxiety can affect other things in our playing. For those of us that are listening, it can make it not such a great experience to listen to if the person that we're listening to is struggling with rhythm. Without rhythm, it's incredibly difficult to know where we are in a piece. Because rhythm provides like the skeleton-like structure, if we don't know what beat we're on, we don't know where we are in the measure. And if we don't know where we are in a certain measure, we certainly don't know where we are in the phrase or where we are in the piece. So acknowledging our rhythm and knowing where our beats are provides little anchor points throughout our piece of music. It helps us to organize all of the symbols and to organize all of the notes into something that makes sense. And without rhythm, it's almost impossible to coordinate our hands to work together. We have 10 fingers and when we play the piano, they're all doing tons of different things at the same time, at different times. Sometimes they're resting, sometimes they're playing together. And it's a lot to comprehend all at once. And if we're not keeping a steady beat or a steady pulse, and we're not acknowledging where those beats are and which beat we're on, it's almost impossible to coordinate the hands. So we must have a steady beat and we must be familiar with the rhythm in our piece in order to coordinate our hands to work together as they should. Lastly, rhythm is so important because it's almost impossible to be musical without rhythm. Because of all the points that I mentioned previously, if we don't know where we are in our piece, if we're feeling anxious because we can't find a beat, we're not gonna be able to express ourselves fully and to experience the musicality of a piece of music. So in order to keep a steady beat, there are many things that we can do to practice. And I'm gonna give you several pointers and tips on how to do this. Now, I am a huge advocate of practicing rhythm every day, whether it's for one minute or five minutes or 15 minutes, incorporate it into your practice routine and have part of your practice be completely devoted to rhythm. And you will notice after an amount of time that your rhythm skills are getting better and that you're either building a really solid foundation of rhythm or you're increasing the size of that foundation. So one of the first things that we can do in order to practice keeping a steady beat with the ultimate goal of being able to keep a steady beat when we play music is to first internalize what a steady beat is. And one of the very best ways to do that is to turn on our metronome and clap along. And that might sound really silly, but if you struggle with rhythm, this can be a daunting task and it can be really challenging to do. So we're gonna do it at a bunch of different speeds, but we're gonna start nice and slow. So I'm gonna turn my metronome on to 60 and we're just gonna clap along and see if we can do that for a couple of minutes. And at first you can watch your metronome and that will help you predict when the beats are going to be. 
Now, ideally, you're not clapping right after the beat or right before the beat. Ideally, you are clapping right on the beat, exactly with your metronome. And as you get more comfortable with this, you might start to look away from your metronome and see if you can still clap with it. And then eventually, I want you to close your eyes and see if you can still keep that nice steady beat with the metronome. Now, once you can do that comfortably at 60, you're gonna practice doing that at all sorts of different speeds. So you can practice doing that at 80, 100, 120, 200, any speed that you want, but I want you to jump around and change speeds so that you get completely comfortable clapping with the metronome, anticipating when that steady beat is gonna happen and internalizing that. So not looking at the metronome, maybe closing your eyes or looking away from the metronome and being able to stay with the metronome. Once you're comfortable clapping along with the metronome, you're gonna take it a step further and you're going to start to test yourself in your ability to create a steady beat. You're going to turn on the metronome to a certain speed. You're gonna clap along with the metronome for a little while until you feel like you have that pulse internalized. And then you're gonna turn your metronome off and you're gonna continue to clap for another minute or so. And then you're gonna turn the metronome back on and see if you are still with the metronome. Ah. Right on. And you're gonna do that at many different tempos until you get to the point where you can hear a steady pulse, take away the metronome, and continue to create that steady pulse on your own without rushing or slowing down. So when you turn the metronome back on, you double check that you are still in fact at that exact same speed. Now, once you do that, the next step would be to start to memorize different tempos. And to be able to create them out of thin air without the use of the metronome. Now this might sound impossible, but I promise that it's not. I promise you can do it. And the way that you do it is you start to practice a lot at a certain tempo. So let's say 120. We're gonna turn the metronome on to 120. We're gonna get to the point where we can clap along with 120, and we're gonna get to the point where we can hear 120, turn off the metronome, and continue at 120 all on our own. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice distracting ourselves. So thinking about something else, watch TV for a few minutes, or play a piece of music that's at a different tempo, and then I want you to stop, and I want you to really think about it, and I want you to see if you can pick 120 out of thin air. So let's try it. Okay, I think this is about 120. Let's check me. I was close. I wasn't quite there. I was close. So then I would go, I would maybe practice a little bit more at 120 and then I'd go distract myself for a minute and I'd do it again. And you'll find that after three or four times of doing that, you can get pretty close to certain tempos and that's awesome because ultimately when we start to play a piece of music we're creating something from nothing and in order to be able to do that we have to know what speed we're starting at right and it's pretty wild how often we'll start playing a piece without thinking of how fast or slow it's supposed to go being able to pick a tempo out of thin air is incredibly important and you can memorize lots of different tempos i would recommend starting with the tempos that you need for your pieces so if you're going to be practicing certain pieces at certain tempos start by memorizing those tempos but you'll find that once you do four or five of them, like if you know 40 and 60 and 100 and 140, you'll be pretty good at gauging the in-betweens as well. So you don't need to go through and memorize every single number on your metronome, but if you have five or six memorized, you'll be really good at anticipating what a certain tempo is and picking it out of thin air. Once we have memorized many tempos and we're comfortable picking them out of thin air, then we need to be able to translate that into keeping that tempo nice and steady while we are also processing reading music, creating music, being musical, coordinating our hands, and all of the other things that are required when we're actually playing through a piece of music while keeping a steady tempo. And bridging the gap between having an internal sense of a steady tempo and being able to keep a steady tempo while we're playing can be challenging because sometimes it's a really big gap, but that's okay, you can do it. It just takes some practice. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some rhythm drills. And in order to do some rhythm drills, there are tons of different ways that you can do it. There's a really great rhythm book by Robert Starr that I like. Um, I'll link that in the description below. There's also 
a rhythm app that's really fun called Rhythm Cat. I'll link that in the description below. Um, there are rhythm flashcards that you can get. I'll link some of those in the description below. And also there are tons of online resources for rhythm. The one that I'm gonna be using in this video is one I just Googled rhythm drills, I think and this free PDF came up and I'm gonna link that as well. But you can find lots of different ways to drill rhythm. You can also just open a piece of music and work on rhythm that way. I would recommend though starting at a level that you might consider to be too easy because we can always go things that are more challenging but if we start with something that's too challenging, it's gonna get really frustrating and we're not gonna be able to improve our skill level. So we wanna go back to something that feels really easy. So these examples that I'm gonna show you might look really beginner but I would say even if you're advanced or you're playing really high level repertoire, keep following along and see if you can do all of the challenges that I'm going to give you because you might find that even with these really simple looking exercises there are things that you can't do rhythmically and that means you might need to go back to those simple exercises and kind of improve that rhythm foundation before you can do more complicated things rhythmically. We're gonna look at some rhythm exercises and our ultimate goal is to be able to clap and count these out loud with the metronome and then to take the metronome away and be able to clap and count these out loud with a steady beat. So in order to do that, we're gonna do some of the things that we were doing before, but we're also gonna have to do some new things because we actually have notes on a page now. But the first thing that I like to do when I'm looking at something is to write in the counts. So you're gonna go through whatever rhythm exercise you're using and you're gonna write in the beats. Like that. And this is helpful for two reasons. One, it forces us to really think about what's going on rhythmically and to get really clear on where the beats are and how the notes fit within those beats. But two, it gives us a visual representation of the rhythm and that makes it a lot easier to count out loud. So once you have your rhythm written in, then you're going to turn on the metronome to a slower tempo and you're gonna clap and count this out loud. So let's do that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you're gonna do that many times in a row until you can do it three to five times perfectly with no mistakes. And I don't use that word very often. It's not a word that I like, but we really do want to strive for perfection in rhythm here. So we're not making any mistakes. We're doing it three to five times exactly correct. And then we can go a little bit faster. So then I might increase my tempo by 10 or 15 clicks and do it again a little bit faster. Same thing. I'm going to do that three to five times perfectly. And then I'm going to increase the tempo and see if I can get this to a pretty fast tempo and do it while maintaining the accuracy. If you can do all of those things, that means that you're ready to move on and try another one. So then I would suggest that you go on to the next line and the next line of this example or of whatever example or rhythm exercises that you're using and to build from there. The nice thing is that if you find a resource online that's already a compiled PDF or you buy a book or something like that, it's going to move in a way that progresses and makes sense level wise. So I would recommend doing that. Now, if you're finding it really challenging, to follow along and to do these four measures or this whole line at a time, then I would recommend that you break it down and just do one measure at a time. You can always do one measure at a time and that is totally fine. And that's a great way to build your skill and to eventually be able to do longer sections of music. Now, once you are able to clap and count the rhythm out loud with the metronome, you can take the metronome away and test yourself like we did before. So you can get your metronome at a certain speed, turn it off, play through the example and then turn the metronome back on and make sure you remained at that steady speed. You can also try to pick a tempo out of thin air and practice clapping and counting and making sure that you did in fact choose the correct tempo and double check by turning on the metronome when you're done. Once you've done that and that feels comfortable, then I would actually recommend playing around on the piano. So follow the rhythm and play the rhythm, but choose your own notes. And that's gonna add another layer that makes it really challenging because now you are actually playing notes with the rhythm, but that's a really great way to engage your brain and to get your hands on the keys to bridge that gap between studying and practicing keeping a steady pulse and playing your pieces with a steady pulse. Now, I would recommend that you do various exercises at your own pace, at your own level, every single day for a certain amount of time. And once you feel like you've been doing that and you've increased the difficulty and you're still able to clap and count the rhythms accurately three to five times in a row, then I would recommend that you do these exact same things in your pieces of music. 
write in your counting, pick a slow tempo, clap and count your pieces out loud, and then start to put notes with that counting and with the metronome. Go slow at first, work in really small sections, and you can do this. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please give it a thumbs up so that other people can benefit from it as well. And go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so that you can stay up to date with all of my helpful practice tips. I'll see you next time.